When we think of royal families and monarchs, you think of power, crowns, palaces and wealth, whether we're talking about Prince Albert of Monaco or King Salman of Saudi Arabia. But of all the royals in the world, none conjure such feelings of genuine warmth and admiration as Queen Elizabeth II of Great Britain. Everyone has a soft spot for the Queen, it seems. People even place bets on what colour her outfit will be at royal events such as weddings and race days. In 2019, the Queen undertook 296 official engagements in the UK and on average receives 139,000 guests at receptions, parties and other events, which isn't bad for someone who's 95 years old, at current recording date. That aside, we are asking three key questions. How wealthy is the nonagenarian? Where does her money come from? And does she have any actual power? In terms of power, she's the opposite of Aladdin's genie. Phenomenal cosmic power! She has very little power to enact change in British life and law, fulfilling a role of figurehead across Great Britain and the Commonwealth, conducting mainly ceremonial procedures such as the opening of Parliament and bestowing honours to increase the pool of worthy knights. Yes! Behold my Lord Ulrich! However, despite the lack of actual power, to hold the disapproval of the Queen is no small thing, and she can and will certainly cancel your birthday no matter how old you are. But the question remains, how rich is the royal grandmother? In terms of her overall net worth, this is a pure guess, as there is no obligation for the Queen to publish her personal finances and it's likely she never will. One Forbes article estimates her wealth to be around $500 million, but nobody really knows and other estimates often wrongly include Buckingham Palace, the Crown Jewels, and other assets which are held in trust for the Sovereign, whoever, whomever that may be. She will no doubt hold considerable investments, valuable artworks, precious jewels and property, including Balmoral Castle and the Sandringham Estate in Norfolk, which she inherited from Daddy Bertie, bless his soul. Forget about the blessed shilling! Also, the Queen does voluntarily pay tax on any income she receives from her own personal wealth. Thank you, ma'am. But as for her personal money, we just don't know. Aside from her personal wealth, the Queen has two other sources of income, and they are the Sovereign Grant and the Privy Purse. The Sovereign Grant. This refers to a lump sum received by the Queen each year from the British government to meet the official expenditure of Her Majesty the Queen and the extended royal family. Generally speaking, the Sovereign Grant is 15% of the net income from the Crown Estate two years previously, and in the year 1920 she received £49.4 million. But I feel like I've skipped a step here. What is the Crown Estate? The current system was set up in 1760 by George III, when he inherited not only a huge number of assets, but also a ton of debt and obligations such as paying judges and other civil servants. So, he struck a deal to surrender the profits of the Crown Estate to Parliament in return for an annual lump sum, now known as the Sovereign Grant. I hope you're following me. Today, the Crown Estate is a £14 billion portfolio of property, investments, land and resources which provide income for the British government from the Crown Estate, which is run by an independent board of directors and employs hundreds of people. It has contributed nearly £3 billion to the Treasury over the last decade and made a profit in the year 29 to 2020 of £345 million. Impressive. And finally, on to the Privy Purse, which is a historical term for the Duchy of Lancaster. Much more modern. In essence, the Queen is also the Duke of Lancaster. Yep. She's a duke, and the duchy is a portfolio worth £538 million and is held in trust for the sovereign to provide whomever that may be with an income, and this supplements her, her or his personal and official expenditure, including the upkeep of those two lovely castles. It must be said that the duchy is strictly regulated, and the queen cannot just sell everything willy-nilly and cash in. The duchy is to provide income for future generations to come. The Duchy of Lancaster provided our Queen with a net income of £23 million in the year 2019-2020, and again, this is something she voluntarily pays income tax on. Thank you again, ma'am. So in short, Her Majesty is quite comfortable, quite a wealthy lady, with no chance of the corgis going hungry anytime soon. Between the Sovereign Grant, the Privy Purse and her own personal income, she'll be buying new hats for many years to come, with an annual income well over £70 million before taxes. We guess. Finally, 
If you enjoyed this video and would like to see similar content, please do smash that subscribe button, hit the like icon, and pop a comment below. But, TTFN for now, folks.